right, well, welcome back to our second to last session of Groves here. Uh, it's been a great semester so far. It's been talking about how to church, but we're we're kind of coming to the end here. This is the second to last session. And so a couple of housekeeping items, just so we, we kind of clean up uh, everything at the, end, at the end of the semester here. And so I just want to remind you that uh, next week we'll be taking up our Grove Babysitters Collection. Uh, if you're new to Groves, I think most of you have been around for a while. You understand the importance of this. But uh, we have uh, 27 kids that are being babysat week in and week out uh, for the last three months, basically. Um, and there's nine, nine students and, and adults together that are, are doing that and making it possible for us to meet in Groves and for everybody who's a part of Rising to be in a Grove, uh, especially those who have younger kids. And so uh, one of the things that we've committed ourselves to do is to support um, these nine uh, students who are, are doing this for us and serving us in this way uh, by taking up a collection so that we can uh, raise some money so that we can basically help fund their mission trips and their their camps. And so we set up this fund and we really hope that everybody will, will participate and give towards it uh, so that we can make it possible for everybody to be a part of Grove. So you're gonna take up that collection next week, but if you haven't already, you can go ahead and do that. But just wanted to remind you guys to be talking about that and making sure we do just that. Um, and uh, so after we did that housekeeping item, now back to your regularly scheduled program. Um, so we're in our second to last week of, of, of the session here. And again, we've been talking about how to church. Uh, and this week we're going to get to kind of maybe a harder uh, harder lesson, something that may not be comfortable to talk about, uh, but I feel like it's essential for us to talk about if we're really going to understand what it means to do church and to be church and how to church. Uh, again, it kind of comes out of, it's touched on, on in Ephesians, and you should have just finished reading a, a pretty lengthy passage out of Ephesians chapter 5, uh, which is going to lead into this. And so I just kind of want to read a couple passages, and then I want us to talk about it, and then you're going to talk more about it and how to, to live it out in your groves. Uh, but in verse 29, he says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. We talked about this last week, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And we talked about how important it is to encourage each other. And when you encourage each other, really it's about being in relationship with each other so that you can come alongside each other uh, and encourage each other and kind of point each other in the right direction and build each other up. Uh, and so he kind of starts li listing in, in, chapter five and actually the end of chapter four, kind of like, as I said before, this is what your old life used to look like and here's what your new life looks like. And so you need to take off these patterns that you used to do in your old way of thinking when you lived in darkness. And now that you live in light, you got to put on these new things. And so he kind of goes back and forth. And so he's saying, hey, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth because that's the way you used to live, but only what is helpful for building each other up. Uh, in the body of Christ. And so he says, in the next verse says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. We talked about this a couple Sundays ago, uh, where we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, where the, the Holy Spirit looks on us and just like is almost saddened. He's uh, not depressed necessarily, but, but pained almost by what he sees in our behavior and what we're doing. So he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And in verse 31, he says, get rid of He's like, these are the old things you need to get rid of from your past life, your former way of thinking, your former way of doing things. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of rage. Get rid of anger. Get rid of brawling and slander. Get rid of every form of malice. And he says, instead, now you need to be kind and compassionate to one another. Verse 32, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. And then we're going to come to our first key verse here, which is uh, Ephesians 5.1. He says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. He's saying, now that you're adopted into God's family, now you're a part of God's household, you need to imitate your father. That's actually the word here in the Greek is, is uh, mime, let me get this right, mimetes. And it's where we get our modern day word mimic. Uh, and so he's saying, hey, be imitators of God who's now your father, you're his kids. And just like, you know, they say like, like father, like son, he's saying, this is what your father is like. So now this is what you need to be doing. You need to, to imitate your father. You need to follow his example. You need to mimic him. Uh, another definition of this word that I really like is it says, the positive imitation that arises by admiring the pattern set by someone worthy of emulation. And so when you think of when you think of mimic, it's not the same as like to mock, because mock is kind of like making fun of somebody by imitating them. But this is mimic, meaning no, no, no. I respect this person. I want to follow in their footsteps. I admire the pattern that they have set, and therefore I want to imitate them. I want to mimic them. And so he's saying, mimic God. If God's your father, then you need to mimic him, imitate him, be like him. 
And he says this in verse two, and walk in the way of love. And we actually talked about this word walk, which is peripateo, uh, which means to walk. It means to live. It means to conduct yourself. And so he's saying, hey, conduct yourself in the way of love. Follow the way of love. Live the way of love. Walk in that path, in that direction, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So he's saying, we need to imitate and follow God's example, and we need to walk in the way of love. And then he's going to start saying some stuff which is, is kind of difficult. And he gets this whole paragraph where he says, hey, among you as believers, as the church, he's like, there can't be any of this old sinful pattern. There can't be sexual morality. There can't be impurity. There can't be greed. It's like, this, this is just isn't. It's not proper for God's people. In verse 4, he says there shouldn't be obscenity. There shouldn't be foolish talk or coarse joking because these are out of place. It's just that's not mimicking the Father any longer. That's not imitating him. And then he says this in verse 5, For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And he's saying, like, don't be fooled. It's like you can't keep living this way. You can't keep walking in the old patterns. And I love what he says. I don't love it, but it's, he says something in critical. Another key verse is verse 7. He says, therefore, do not be partners with them. He says, if there are people among you who are continuing to walk like they used to walk before they came to Jesus, and they're not imitating God, they're imitating the world, they're mimicking the world instead of mimicking God, he's like, you cannot be partners with them. Literally, this word means joint partakers. He's saying you can't partake in the same stuff that they're doing. You can't partner with them and walk alongside them in the same way because they're just not going the same direction as you. It's similar to what Paul says that you probably heard in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, where he says, hey, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. He's like, because what fellowship can light have with darkness? It's like you cannot be yoked together. You can't be bound together. You can't be partners with these people. Otherwise, they're going to lead you astray. In verse 8, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. There's our word, peripateo again. Walk. Walk as children of light. In verse 10, he says, and find out what pleases the Lord. 11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. And so what we're going to be talking about today is, is, is maybe a difficult topic because it's the question of, well, what do we do when we have people in the church, our fellow brothers and sisters who claim to be following Jesus, who claim to be walking with God, who claim to be walking in love, who claim to be walking in light, but when they're doing the deeds of darkness and when they're not mimicking God, they're mimicking the world. Well, what do, what do we do? do? Can we partner with them? Can we be fellow partakers with them? What, what are we supposed to do in those situations? How do we handle that? And so to me, it kind of goes back to the word we talked about before, which is encourage, uh, which is the idea of you coming alongside somebody because you're in relationship with them and, and pointing them in the right direction or encouraging them uh, in that word. And this is kind of the, the flip side of that. It's, it's the same coin, but it's the opposite side of it. And that is this word that I think that a lot of times in church, we just don't know what to do with, and that's accountability. So how do we have accountability in the body of Christ? How do we have accountability in church? What do we do if we have a fellow brother or sister who is not walking in light, but is walking in darkness? What are we supposed to do as their brothers and sisters? How do we help them become imitators of God? How do we imitate God and mimic God and what he would do? And so what are we supposed to do? You know, one of the working with students for years and years and years and years, uh, one of the things I would always tell them when it comes to their friendships, their, their core friendships, is I would say 1 Corinthians 15, 33, which says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I'd always tell them, you need to be careful with who, who you walk with, uh, who you are partners with, who you are yoked with, because if they're not if they're bad, if they're going a bad direction, then they can very easily pull you away. Or Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. If you're walking with wise people, then you're gonna, it's going to help you become wise. They're going to build you up. But if you're walking with fools, you're going to suffer harm. These are all biblical truths. And so what do we do? What do we do when we have a fellow brother or sister who is not walking the way they're supposed to be walking? How do we confront them? How do we hold them accountable? 
And so this is the question that I want us to tackle today. It's what we're going to be discussing as a group. We're going to be looking at some passages, some of the ones we just already read and looking at them more in depth, but also some other words that Jesus gives us on, on how exactly do we encourage each other and build each other up, but when it's not the easy kind where it's just you know, saying nice things to each other and encouraging each other, uh, which is a good habit for us to be in. And hopefully we're, we're doing that and you did it this week. But, but how do we do it when it comes to the hard stuff? How do we do it when we see somebody who's starting to sin? When we see somebody who's starting to go back to their former way of thinking or their former way of life and they're being tempted away from the fellowship or to be tempted to go back into sin, what's our responsibility as brothers and sisters towards each other? Where do we walk that fine line between not partnering with them and not partaking with them, but also trying to encourage them to stay and to go back towards God and imitate him? And so I think this could this is a very important lesson uh, that I hope that we're going to be able to discuss and figure out and work through together. Uh, but it's one that I feel like if we're going to figure out how to church, if we're going to be the church that we want to be as Rising Church, then we need to talk about this and figure out how to do it. And so I think we're going to have some pointers, uh, some directions, some guidelines that are going to help us move in that direction. So I hope it'll be a great discussion. I hope it'll be challenging. I hope it'll be thought-provoking. And I hope that we will choose to be a church that is willing to do what's hard and difficult and not always what's easy because it's the right thing to do. Um, so that's hopefully enough to get you guys started and uh, we will catch back up with you next week for our final week. Thanks. Thanks.